I think biodegradable to most people means if you just throw this on the ground, it will go away pretty quickly. Uh, compostable means I need to send this to a special facility or put it into a, a compost and then it will break down probably also pretty quickly. So because of those definitions, um, companies have taken advantage of them. Hello, and welcome back to the Outdoor Minimalist Podcast. I'm your host, Meg Carney, and I'm an outdoor and environmental writer and author of the book, Outdoor Minimalist, Wasteless Hiking, Camping, and Backpacking. The Outdoor Minimalist Podcast has the goal to give listeners actionable ways to waste less hiking, camping, backpacking, and more during every step of their process. Your impact outdoors starts long before you hit the trail and goes beyond leave no trace ethics. You'll learn how to identify sustainable outdoor brands, how to ask hard questions regarding sustainability, and begin to shift and evolve your mindset to integrate minimalism into all of your outdoor pursuits. In episode 129 of the Outdoor Minimalist podcast, we return to a highly requested topic area on the show, product packaging. By now, we all know that plastic is a problem, but what are some of the alternatives and how can we as consumers really know if other single-use packaging options are as green as they say they are? We answer those questions and many more with the founder of Sophie Products, Brandon Leeds. Sophie Products is an innovative manufacturer of sustainable paper products. They are known for their world's best paper straws that do not get soggy. And more recently, Sophie has launched a paper cup with a built-in lid. Thanks so much for joining me on the Outdoor Minimalist podcast today, Brandon. You have a lot to share, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about your brand and why you got started, your passions around plastic, pollution, and much more. But before we get to that, um, let's kind of dive in a bit about your background and then how you started Sophie Pro Projects. Sophie Products. Um, so go ahead and overview your professional background along with what was the genesis, I guess, of Sophie Products. So professionally, uh, software engineer, so nothing to do with paper products or sustainability. Um, I was a software engineer for six years and I always knew that I wanted to start a business, but I thought it was going to be uh, in technology. I thought it was gonna be a SaaS business. My brother and I were looking for something to do together um, around end of 2018, 2019. And it's kind of right when paper straws were, were popping up and he had a milkshake um, with a paper straw and he calls me and he says, the paper straw completely ruined my milkshake. I couldn't even get through the drink. And at the time that was a, a novel experience. And now everyone can relate as they've each had their own experiences just like that. So we thought, um, why don't we make a better paper straw? Um, my brother comes from a product background. I studied finance and we thought, you know, this might be the, the perfect time to do something together. We've always been pretty eco-conscious. So we thought, um, this is a, a great business to get into. Yeah. And now you uh, produce more than just straws, correct? So like what products do you guys make and um, like, who's your target audience? Yeah. So um, all the products that we make, um, we try to give some sort of benefit outside of sustainability to our customers. Um, so with the paper straws, they don't fall apart. They don't get soggy. They don't taste like paper. And then coming from the straws, we came up with this cup that has a, a built-in lid. So our cold cup, it's almost like a takeout container where you fold four flaps, creates a lid, and there's a hole for a straw. And then the hot cup, same thing. You fold three flaps, and there's a spout um, for you to drink out of, almost like those plastic sip lids. Um, and all of our products um, decompose in a reasonable amount of time, which is 180 days for us. Um, but like I said, the goal really is to make sustainability accessible with our products. It's always been viewed as something that's expensive and you need to give up something in return to do good for the planet, like customer experience, poor quality. Uh, but with our products, we try to improve the customer experience and also give some sort of benefits like on costs with by eliminating the lid and space and things like that. Very holistic view. Um, so. 
kind of backing up a little bit and how you founded Sophie Products, was there a specific reason why you felt like um, there was a need for this type of paper cup, <laughs> I guess? Is there, is it, why is environmentally friendly packaging important to you? So on a personal level, I've always been an outdoors person since I was little, um, spending as much time outside in the water. So I've always had an affinity for and appreciation for the environment. Same thing with my brother. Um, and I think while I said before, you know, starting, I thought I was going to start probably a SaaS business. Um, when this came up and we had this idea, it's something that I could also be passionate about. So that's where the idea came from it. I mean, to be honest, we're both, you know, I would say normal, uh, eco-conscious, like probably a little bit above the average person, but that's, I think to get us to kind of the next phase of sustainability and eliminating plastic ideas need to come up that are accessible to everyone as normal people. And so that's why we thought it was an interesting challenge of how can we come up with products that you're able to produce on a large scale to replace um, a lot of the plastic and products in our everyday lives. Yeah, so in the process of creating these paper products versus plastic ones, um, did you learn a lot about the single use packaging problem that we kind of face globally? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it didn't even require that much research. If you go into any supermarket, um, any retail store and just look at the aisles, there's pa there's plastic and everything. Even on clothes, the tags have plastic and everywhere there's plastic, right? Uh, even in the clothing themselves, there's plastic. So, um, you know, it's kind of an, an obvious problem and it's only been... <clears throat> Increasing plastic is deeply ingrained in our society and in our lives, and it's time for us to start transitioning off of it, I think. And we're just trying to figure out solutions to, you know, get us to that, that next level. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's definitely something that people could probably just look around the room or wherever they are listening, this, listening to this podcast at, and they would find plastic. They would see plastic. Um, so that's a good point. And so I'm going to ask the million dollar question about <laughs> eco-friendly products. And that is what makes your specific cup or straw better than the plastic alternatives? So, yeah, so specifically on our products, um, like I said, we focus on creating products that actually decompose in a reasonable amount of time, which for us is 180 days as a benchmark. and. Um, we, the goal is that you should be able to dispose of our products in any way and they'll decompose. Um, they don't need any sort of special treatment. We've taken fish tanks and put our straws uh, compared to all the other eco-friendly straws out there in soil and taken pictures over six months and as they to watch them decompose. So even just burying our cups and our straws in soil, they'll decompose within 180 days. Yeah. And I recently, like in the last year or so, started to learn more about like different chemicals that are used in a lot of consumer products and goods. Um, and I did see that finally the FDA uh, like approved the phase out of PFOS chemicals in like mm -hmm. at least six different kinds of PFOS. I know that there's more um, in food packaging. So how are you able to avoid the use of chemicals like that? Um, in your products? Yeah, so for us on, on the straw side of things, there's no coating needed at all. We actually use a food grade coating, but it's simply for the taste. So it has nothing to do with creating a barrier or the strength of the straw. If you remove the, the coating that we use, the straw would still be just as strong. On the cup side of things, we use the, a water-based coating. It's an aqueous coating. Um, and so that way you don't need to use any sort of bioplastics, nothing made from corn and PLA and all these other eco-friendly, eco-friendly materials that we see out there. So, um, that's really how we get through this is by just doing research, testing, 
using materials and um, substances that have been tested and that we can also test. I mean, everything that we do, we test as well for compostability and uh, our own internal testing to make sure that it does decompose. I'm even surprised that PFAS still exists in our world. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy that it's taken this long to phase that out. Um, but yeah, it's just through choosing the the right materials to work with and not, you know, choosing things that are going to harm the environment. Yeah, absolutely. Doing your due diligence. And since you were kind of talking about compostability and eco-friendly in quotes <laughs> products like <laughs> the corn or bioplastics, um, I think it would be helpful to kind of dive in a little bit about like biodegradable and compostable plastics, like what they are, what the issues are involved with them, and then if they actually break down. Yeah, so I think as a starting point, you need to look at what the words mean. Uh, and what I mean is not the actual definition of them, but what do consumers think they mean? Because that's different. And from my own experience, and even before starting um, a sustainable products business, my knowledge of those words as well was pretty basic. I think biodegradable to most people means if you just throw this on the ground, it will go away pretty quickly. Uh, compostable means I need to send this to a special facility or put it into a, a compost and then it will break down probably also pretty quickly. So because of those definitions, um, companies have taken advantage of them especially the word biodegradable. So California actually banned the word biodegradable for use on products because of that, because plastic companies were putting biodegradable on plastic bags. Because technically it is biodegradable in a hundred plus years, it will biodegrade. So back to the, the question of what is the, the difference? Um, it's, it's kind of tricky because compostable products are biodegradable, but biodegradable products aren't necessarily compostable so it's kind of just looking deeper into the we need to look deeper into those definitions because biodegradable at this point means nothing i mean if you see a product with biodegradable it, you shouldn't even pay attention to it because that could mean five years it could mean 500 years um whereas compostable means that it does have a chance of decomposing if you put it into a, a compost yeah, and I do know that there's like differences in, especially for food packaging, like compostable plastics sometimes need to be sent to an industrial facility versus like at home com compost. Um, so to your knowledge, are there different types of compostable, I guess, plastics or products, product materials that would be better than others? Yeah, again, it's uh, it's a tricky conversation because companies have really at this point um, diluted the meaning of these words and home compostable is the only thing that we can pretty much trust at this point as being somewhat um, biodegradable within less than six months ideally so in terms of like materials i mean there's really nothing that i could suggest i mean pla pha those are the the main compostable products out there, and those require going to sending for separating the garbage, sending it to a compost facility, and hopefully that compost facility actually accepts that product and puts it into the their compost. So, yeah, home compostable products are are the ones to really look out for because um, those ones likely have the the biggest chance of decomposing quickly. Yeah, so for your products, I know you mentioned earlier that they do biodegrade within 120 days or something like that. Um, are there other ways to, I guess, dispose of them? Like, can you burn them? Um, can you put them in your at-home compost? Yeah, so they are completely home compostable. So I do recommend if you have a compost, putting them in your compost. I mean, that's the best way. Um, Otherwise, if they do make it to a, a landfill, it does depend on how that landfill is set up, but most likely um, it will decompose probably within 
six to six weeks to six months. So like I said before, you know, we try to make things that no matter how you dispose of them, they'll decompose. Awesome. Yeah, I love that that was kind of like the purpose of starting the business. I think that when you have sustainability at the forefront, like when you're creating all of the different systems and choosing products, it makes it easier versus changing it later down the line. Um, And so if you are speaking to other producers, product producers, or maybe um, businesses that would integrate your products into their use, um, what would you say are a few ways that they could integrate more sustainable packaging options into their different product lines or offerings? Yeah, absolutely. So as producers, I mean, I think there's a couple different levels to that. So for example, as operators, if you run a restaurant or a large chain or even a, a small mom and pop, I think there's easy ways to quickly eliminate things that you don't need. That's probably the first step is just getting rid of things like utensils and I, I don't know, looking at items that maybe you could get rid of quickly. And then from that step, looking at, okay, what are easy things that I can't get rid of, but I can maybe switch to a, a more sustainable option. Um, so it's just being able to identify what products you're using, how can I switch those out? And then uh, kind of on the the packaging side of things, we're seeing a lot more packaging enter into the retail space of um, supermarkets and frozen foods and meals to go, where now there's options that there weren't a year ago. So I think we're going to start seeing in the next few years, hopefully sooner, um, packaging start to to switch towards things that are kind of part of this sustainability 1.5, where you know we were using only compostable before, and now we're switching to things that actually decompose. Um, the only thing though is to make sure that when you do switch to these products, that they are entirely compostable, like. You, for example, using a compostable salad bowl, but having a plastic film on top of it or a plastic lid uh, for frozen food packaging. And then that being sent to a compost facility, like they're not going to accept um, that product. Most of them have a uh, zero tolerance. So just making sure that the entire product is compostable and um, that, you know, the products that you choose can can decompose. Yeah, those are great suggestions. And I guess if we are kind of moving down the line of people who interact with these products, what what could we say to consumers? So like as consumers, a lot of times we were just given like a couple of different options. We don't have a lot of control over that. Um, But how can we make better um, decisions in terms of the products that we're buying and the packaging that they're coming in? So looking, it kind of goes back to before of the home compostable versus industrial compostable versus biodegradability. Uh, And I think just being smart about the decisions that we're making as consumers and thinking, okay, if this product looks like plastic and feels like plastic, most likely when it ends up wherever it's going, it's going to do the same as plastic and it's going to take just as long. So I think just being smart about using products that are marked as home compostable, that if they're certified compostable, making sure that you actually end up sending them to a compost facility um, and just educating yourself on how to make those those right decisions. Because like I said, a lot of companies in our space are taking advantage of this by marking their products as industrial compostable when no one really knows what that means or biodegradable. and so at this point, it's kind of up to us as consumers to get educated. And that's what we're trying to do as a business as well, is spread the word and educate people about how to make the right decisions with sustainable products. Yeah. Hmm. I was going to ask a follow-up question there, but I forgot. That's okay. Uh, we'll cut that part out. All right, no worries. <laughs> Um, also, well, that is, that are, those are most of the questions that I had for you. Um, are there other things that you would like to add? 
um, before we get to like your social links and things like that? Yeah, I think there, just the last thing to add is, you know, it's really unfortunate that greenwashing has become such a big thing and how it's become so easy, especially in the US, um, for companies to misuse green language and green colors and green marketing to take advantage of consumers. And it's in order for us to, I mean, those companies are kind of setting us back uh, in terms of making the right steps forward because now people think they're using eco-friendly products, but yet those products are not actually eco-friendly and it's just creating more noise for products that are actually trying to make a difference. So it's really just important as consumers to always be mindful that what you're using might not be marketed correctly and just to do your own research and make sure that you know you're making smart choices, the right choices and think twice about throwing it out in the garbage bin. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you for sharing all of that. And if listeners want to learn more about you, your story and any of Sophie products, how can they do that? They can head to our website at sophieproducts.com or our Instagram at Sophie Paper. Uh, and there you can find us on both. Awesome. I'll be sure to share those links in the show notes below. So if people want an easy way to find you, they can do that there. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you hear, let me know. Leave a review and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on Instagram at outdoor.minimalist.book, on YouTube, or subscribe to our weekly newsletter at theoutdoorminimalist.com. For even more updates, other educational resources, and to help build an outdoor community with the shared goal to create a better outdoor space as we recreate.